buddy. Can you hear me? There are three types of patients on the battlefield. There are soldiers who will do well. You can put all your bandages on backwards, and they're just meant to survive. Then there are soldiers who are going to die regardless of what you do for them. And then the last one we're going to work on. That's the last one that will die unless we do something from now. What I don't want you to do is come home with the ghost. We've got to get better at providing care for our soldiers. You don't want to kill somebody or have somebody die because you didn't do the right thing. Really hurt. I know we're going to get that fixed up for you. All right, we're going to put a tourniquet on your uh, right lower leg. Get out! Cover your faces! Cover your faces! See you later. We had an idea up from the top of this building. Prior to the mannequins, we trained with just basic CPR mannequins with a little bit of red Kool-Aid on it. They had no internal mechanics, they were just a shell. We have some mannequins where we had to drill holes in the nose so that the students can put NPAs in them. Training was nothing more than your NCO sitting down with you and pretty much go over a checklist. Everyone was really good at regurgitating the answers. But when it came time to apply it, it was a completely different story. Can you give me a tourniquet? No, get your own tourniquet. Go to the next letter. Go to the next letter. Get your own tourniquet. Here at the Fort Carson Mystic, we have about four or five different dummy trainers. Depending on the scenario and where we want the students to get out of it, we'll, we'll use uh, different mannequins at different times. It's about $90,000 worth of computer within these guys. They, they can breathe. They, they're pneumatic, so their lungs, they can inflate with air. Most of the pulses you can find on a, on a real person, you could find on these mannequins. Their pupils uh, react to light, so you can put a pen light in the eyes. If the evaluator wants to, we can simulate dilated or constricted pupils. Assesses pupils, possible head injury. Each mannequin comes with a instructor's tablet where we're controlling anything from the vital signs of the patient. We can decrease rise and fall on either side of the chest, left or right so we can simulate the development of a tension pneumothorax, so a collapsed lung. The student has the benefit of visualizing that rise and fall of the chest, being able to count the respirations, as opposed to an evaluator saying your patient is breathing 20 times per minute. We can occlude airways, we can either constrict the uh, trachea, we can have the mannequin's tongues fall back, you can put an ET tube, a King LT, in, in the, the mouth of the patient. Our mannequins here, one of the biggest benefits that they provide is real-time feedback to the student. I got a strong carotid but no radio. Pretty much any intervention you could do on a real person, you could you could do on these mannequins. Uh, yes, we'll get direct fire. Yeah, yeah. On the top side of the building. Yeah, we gotta go, we gotta go, we gotta go. I feel this technology is saving lives because it, it kind of gets away from people using bad habits. Who should put that on, Clark? Who should put that on? I should put somebody outside. Okay, then use the words. There you go. By actually being able to do it on a mannequin, they get that muscle memory in place so that way they won't do the wrong thing when their memory fails and they're just going off what their hands remember. Getting in here, seeing that injury, knowing what to do, treating it repeatedly builds that muscle memory so that when you see it in real time, downrange, there's no question on what you have to do. Now you just put it into action. Yeah.